Welcome to Pet Talk. I'm Lauren Collier. Thank you for joining us. And just look at how cute this guy and gal are. They're twins. They're a boy and a girl. And boy, are they rare. A Texas Wildlife Sanctuary is celebrating the birth of twins, Waswa and Nakado. They're born on May 10th, and this is only the second time twin giraffes have been born right here in the U.S. Officials say most twins develop complications and don't survive birth, but this boy and girl are happy, healthy, <laughs> and doing well. And so are these adorable guys and gals, all of them incredibly cuddly, and all of them looking for a wonderful lap to call their own. They're here from Karuna Bully Rescue, which is a wonderful rescue group right here in Connecticut. Please welcome one of the administrators, Naomi. She is here with the fabulous Mickey, who's looking for a wonderful home, along with Jennifer and her two daughters, who are here with their foster pup, who is named Toby Keith, and the adorable Magnolia May, both of whom are looking for their forever homes. So welcome one and all. We're so happy to have you all here today. So thank you so much for coming. I'm gonna start with you, Naomi, um, because I wanna remind folks about your mission. You're such a wonderful group. You do so much. Uh, not only do you do rescue, but you do rehab and adoptions, and we're really thrilled to have you here today. Thank you so much. Uh, Karuna does a wonderful job. We do help uh, abandoned pit bulls, pit bull mixes, and any bully breed, as you can see, uh, Magnolia and Toby are a bully breed mix. So, so adorable. And of course, uh, you work with uh, volunteers. Mm -hmm. uh, you have fosters, like our foster mom, Jen. Um, and you also are always looking for folks, uh, like our viewers, who can mm -hmm. come and help you, not only adopt, but in some of your events, and also in some of your fundraising. It's been a tough time lately. Yes, we actually have, um, we have a lot of dogs who have medical medical needs right now. Um, we have Jake and Harlow who we've spent you know a lot of money on for surgeries and we do that because we want you know we're going to help the dog. Once we take them in they're our dog, they're, they're our responsibility um, but it does it gets very costly and we do rely on our supporters and the community to help with the funding. So we're going to meet all of our dogs today uh, but first I think we're going to see a couple of the photos of, of some of the dogs that could not be here today. Uh, I know uh, Harlow uh, is, is a major success story. Uh, really, this is just unbelievable. Tell me a bit more. So Harlow, um, we got a call one night. She was in one of the cities in Connecticut. She was abandoned and her ears had been just butchered completely off and they were all infected and pretty, pretty yucky. So one of our supporters called us, we went out and um, we got her, we brought her to the emergency vet clinic in Shelton and she underwent, uh, I think there were two major surgeries to really just reconstruct her air canals so that she wouldn't have future uh, you know, air infections uh, and, and problems. And then now look at her today. Yeah. And she's looking for a home. Oh, what a sweet pea. And you know, she probably knows that you saved her so she can give even that much more love. So, oh, oh, I just, I just love, love this. I love that you've done this. What a beautiful dog. Must find a home, Harlow. Uh, next we have Johnny Cash. Tell Johnny me about Cash. Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash was rescued from um, the New York City shelter. He is an older gentleman. He looks like a senior. He's very distinguished and regal. He loves other dogs, oh. loves kids, um, would prefer not, not a home with cats, but he loves, loves people, and he really just wants to uh, relax with someone, and he's a big mush. And sometimes it's better to have a senior because uh, they've all been trained, and mm -hmm. they're fine, and they're just kind of hanging out on the couch. Very true. Uh, he is a very handsome man. That is Johnny Cash. Uh, next we have, is this Gracie? This is Gracie. Ah. Gracie is one of our young girls. She is about a year and a half. She was rescued from one of the Connecticut shelters. Um, she loves cats, loves kids. She does well with other dogs with good intros, um, but she is, she's looking for a home. She's in a great foster home now. Oh, what a beauty. I love that coloring and I love that little red vest she had on. So we want to adopt Gracie and we have one more, Juno. And Juno is adorable. Looks like my brother's <laughs> dog, actually. So Juno is a young male that we have. He is being fostered currently with another dog. That's his foster brother. He is doing well with other dogs, uh -huh. um, with kids, with people that he's met. And he's another great, great dog that would fit into just about any home. Uh, and next we have a special case. Uh, Jake is coming up. Uh, and what, part of the reason why we're here today is because we want to help Jake. We're trying to raise funds. He was a special rescue. Very important. We want to talk about this. 
So we rescued Jake from the Waterbury shelter. Um, he had been picked up as a stray, was in very, very poor condition, as you can see, very malnourished, neglected, uh, open sores all over his body, um, just very, you know, shut down, but, but still very happy to see people. So we did take him in. He's in a foster home now. He is heartworm positive, so he's undergoing heartworm treatment, but it's, it's very expensive and it's a series of injections and, you know, you have to go easy. He had x-rays and but so. he looks so much better. He so. is. He's looking better and better every day. Uh, love that. Since we're t we had a couple, we talked a little bit about fosters. I want to get to the fosters. Um, and Jen, you're a foster mom, and that's something that uh, you're looking for too. Yes. And you're fostering. You and the girls are uh, helping uh, to foster. First of all, uh, Toby, what's it like? What would you encourage people to be a foster mom? I would. It's definitely rewarding, and you know, both the girls absolutely love it. Oh. They get to have a puppy all the time or a dog, and they. It's actually taught them a lot to, you know, it's the gift that kind of keeps on giving. You can be rewarding. It teaches them to be compassionate, oh. and they love it. They absolutely love it. And as it hard shows. as they thought it would be to, you know, give them up, they'll be the first ones to tell you that they're going to a new home, and they actually call themselves the little rescuers. I, love, and I mean, I can see how proud they are just <laughs> here in helping us. Yeah, that they, they love really it. feel good about it, and it's just all around so so wonderful. I'm almost speechless. Let's talk about the two dogs because we are looking for homes for both of them. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about Toby first. This Toby is Keith. Toby Keith over here and this is his sister. They are Mastiff mixes we think. They are about 14 weeks old and complete total mush balls. Uh. They get along great. We have two boxers of our own and he's great. He's you know he's integrated really well with his foster puppies and um, he's great with kids. He's a really good snuggler. And the girls like him too. And the girls love him. And um, Magnolia May is the sister? She's one of his litter mates, yep. And from what I understand, she kind of is following in suit. She's kind of exactly the <laughs> same way. She's um, great with other dogs. She's got four or three, three that she lives with. Um, she's very, they're all of them I hate to wake mellow. her, but can we just pick up her I face know, because she's with just, her eyes. she has one blue can eye, folks. Open? I mean, and, and they're both so precious. Look at back that. Up, back up, let the camera <laughs> Can um, you see? She's got one blue and one dark. I keep thinking she looks sort of like a I Dalmatian guess. bully. Yeah. Uh, and they're both stunning. Let's take a, a, a great easy. look. So this is Magnolia this May. Is Magnolia. And let's not leave out uh, Toby Keith, Tobes. who is uh, just as uh, beautiful. So he is a boy. He's a boy. And then she's a girl. And she's and a girl. There's two more girls. And there's two more in yeah. the litter that are looking for homes. One that looks like him, just not as brindle, and then the other one's more like her, but black with a little bit of white. And I think she has two different color Precious. eyes as well. Precious. Yeah, that's a great breed. They're very, very mellow. Yes. So Naomi, tell me about Mickey. Now Mickey's very special, not a puppy, but has a lot of puppy in her, right? She does. <laughs> Mickey is currently about 10 and a half, 11 months old. But she was rescued from last year's Gathering of the Vibes concert, uh, which is in Bridgeport in July. She, there was um, a guy selling puppies who were only four weeks old, and one of the concert goers wanted to do a good thing and put a dog in the right hand, so purchased her, went into the festival, and then surrendered her to us that same bravo day. Bravo for them. Oh, bravo. Yes. Oh, Now, she is precious. What kind of home would you be looking for for Mickey? So Mickey absolutely loves people. She actually loves men. Men are her favorite, um, which sometimes dogs don't, you know, True. they're a little bit more wary of men, but Mickey loves men. She loves kids. She would like to be an only pet, though, but she, um, she loves to play ball. She loves to cuddle. Come here, pumpkin. And she's she got a lot of energy, right? Yes. Uh, but she's a perfect size. Is she housebroken? She is housebroken. housebroken. She's crate trained. She knows, um, you know, various commands. She's a good girl. She's she's young. She's what we call an adolescent. So oh, oh, she's sh emerging. Oh. She has some energy. She's very playful, but she's a good girl. I think she'd be great. You can take her on hikes. You can go mm -hmm. running with her. She just wants to play, play, play. She <laughs> is a real beauty. So everybody, this is Mickey. Uh, again, she loves kids. Would like to be the only dog. Has a lot of energy, <laughs> but is just sweet good as girl. sugar. And uh, we just we got to find a home, and has got a great tail because she's wagging it on me, and I'm just loving it. Yes, you could see how much she loves people. <laughs> good girl. Good girl. Yes, good girl. Oh, so thank you so much, everyone. Don't forget, we have all these wonderful babies up for adoption, and we encourage you to adopt. Where can we find you? We are on Facebook. All of our dogs are on Pet Finder and Adopt a Pet, and we also have a website, www.
www.karunabully.org. Fantastic. We encourage you folks, please log on. Uh, please take part, and we will uh, let you know about some upcoming fundraisers coming up. Uh, but we encourage you to adopt, uh, to foster. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you. Uh, and also to lend a hand if you can. We'd really appreciate it. And uh, as we go to break, well, last week we showed you some incredible photos right here on Pet Talk of a huge bear being brought down by a crane from a tree in Colorado. And look, just days later, right here in Connecticut in our own backyard, animal control officers removed a bear from a tree in Danbury. Officers were forced to shoot the bear with two tranquilizer darts before it fell asleep, dropped into a net. The bear had climbed into a tree in a parking lot off Main Street early in the day. Somebody spotted him, and the good news is he is okay and being re-released back into the wild. Uh, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Pet Talk and check this out. Fishing season is in full swing for humans and for cats. Meet Puma and Barkley, sons of Andrew and Shannon who live in South Norwalk. They say their kids are serious little fishermen and come with them every evening at low tide. Just look at those paws go. They really love to fish. Special thanks to News 12's very own Brandon Walker for sending this my way. I hope it will make you smile. It certainly is making me <laughs> laugh out loud. They are just adorable. And I, I bet you these uh, little guys and gals are going to make you smile too. Very, very cute and oh so cuddly. We have got guinea hog piglets and we've also got Nigerian dwarf goat kids. And uh, they're all here from the Connecticut Beardsley Zoo along with our humans, Jim Knox, who is education curator at the zoo, and zookeeper Lindsay Karubia, who is uh, also one that raised these little guys and gals from uh, little babies. Uh, so we're gonna have to hear the skinny right there and we're so happy to have you both here. And I know um, as always, there is so much going on at the zoo. I'm gonna start with you, Jim. It's really busy, a great season. Sure. You're open all the time. Right, yeah, spring has sprung. We have got so much going on between the uh, Mexican wolves that have come into the zoo, which are beautiful and very rare animals the Amur Leopard, which is going on exhibit in the next few weeks. Very excited about that. And the camel rides, too. The camel rides, yeah. that is big. And we have actually yeah. some fun uh, camel facts we're gonna show uh, in a couple of minutes, because it's just so much fun. And when you walk in and you see the camels there, you feel like you're in the desert or something. Yeah, yeah But I really love neat. it because it's so diverse. It is, it is. And you know, the neat thing about camels, there, there's, there are a lot of uh, interesting uh, facts and, and they're really embedded in our history because people have been working with camels for over 5,000 years. Yeah, So amazing. they're fascinating animals in their own right, but there's a human history linked to those animals for just millennia now. And, and you can actually get a ride now at the zoo. So, Absolutely. Uh, that's pretty exciting. Um, also, BZ is who we, everybody met right here, the beautiful yep. Bobcat, uh, has uh, his own little show, which is he kind does. of interesting. He does, he sure does. Yeah, he's doing, uh, we're, he's part of our Animal Bites, B-Y-T-E-S programming. And Animal Bites are, are short uh, animal programs, live animal programs going on all over zoo grounds all summer long. But BZ, you know, truly is, and I hope the other animals aren't listening so they don't get upset with me, <laughs> but he is one of the stars of the show. He's just a very charismatic, uh, highly intelligent, and just a beautiful cat. Oh, he's gorgeous. Yeah. Now, Lindsay, you helped raise all of these zoo babies. So you, this is just an example of some of them. So let's talk about the, the beautiful little, are they dwarf goats? Yeah, Nigerian, Nigerian dwarf goats. Okay, uh, that uh, you and Jim have on your laps. Um, well, we have um, four baby goats this year, um, two boys and two girls. This is one of the girls here, and this is one of the boys, and we left their brother and sister at home. Um, the two girls are twins, and the two boys are twins. Um, they all have the same dad. His name is Rodney. Mm. and um, he's a real stud, he's a real <laughs> handsome boy, so if you come to the zoo, he's the one with the really beautiful beard, and ah. he's got beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fur, so that, that's how you could tell him from the, uh, so the other cute. goats. Um, and we have two moms, uh, the first is Cupcake, and she's the one who had the two girls, uh -huh. and um, we had Peaches, and she's the one who had the two boys. Uh -huh. And these guys are, um, the little girls are, I think are seven weeks old now, and the boys are two weeks younger, so. And they're just around a month. So now, the, and they ha all have the horns. Yeah, um, they have horns. Um, that depends on the breed of goat, but almost all breeds of goats have horns. Um, sometimes they are removed um, for various reasons, but we've chosen to leave these guys intact the way they are. Um, and so they start growing pretty much right from birth. So oh, this is so what you cute. see is, you know, six weeks worth work a, a horn growth here. So. Oh, oh, they are so adorable. And you can see they're pretty mellow. We, we spend a lot of time with them. We yeah. want them to be <laughs> comfortable with people. These guys are probably going to go to other zoos. So we, and you know, most farmyards, they're handled by children and visitors. So we want them to be nice and mellow. And you can see 
Oh, they, and they're so We've cuddly. succeeded in that, I think. And they're kind of quiet. We have uh, some that are outspoken here, so I think we're going to switch out now okay. uh, from uh, the quiet uh, to some of the more outspoken uh, to the cutest little piglets you will ever see. Uh, these, are, these are just, I mean, they're all so, so adorable. Uh, they're fuzzy, and, and it looks like the piglets have some nice little fur and, <laughs> and very vocal. Tell me about them. I love their little tails. Oh, oh, they're so cute. These are what? What are they called? Uh, these are guinea hogs. Guinea hogs. Is yep. a piglet right or no? Yes. Yep. Um, any any baby hog or swine um, pig, those all pretty much mean the same thing. So all of their babies are piglets. Oh, they're so cute. Now, these are how old? Um, these guys are um, just about a month. Yep. And people can see so, them at the zoo. Can we yep. pet them too at the zoo? Yeah. Um, they actually, the babies actually learn really quick that visitors like to pet them. So they'll go and line up and lay against the fence so the little kids can stick their hands through. Oh my gosh. So, so and they cute. have, um, we had six piglets this year, five boys and only one girl. Wow. So, wow. So, and I love that, I don't know if you can show their tails, but they're like the three little piggies, you know, like our, that we all know <laughs> in our little storybooks. They're so cute. And they get all curly when they get excited. And how big do they get to be? <laughs> um, their parents are, Right around 200 pounds for the Whoa. female, about 300 pounds for the male. It probably wouldn't be in our laps at, so. when they no. get a little bit bigger. Yeah. They're cute. I love it. So these are the zoo babies. Uh, we mentioned before the camels, and uh, let's talk about some of those fun facts. I know, Jim, uh, there's actually two different types of camels. Sure. Uh, the ones that you have at the zoo, though, are Toby and Thank Goliath, you. and they have how many humps? These are dromedary camels, so they're one-humped camels. But there's also a type that has two humps. Sure, those are Bactrian camels. I, I had to let you say it because I wasn't you. sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, uh, a camel's hump stores fat, not water. That's surprising. Yes, yeah. A lot of people think that you know the fat is high in water content, but it is. It's not this reservoir water. It's okay. Just that. Oh, that's so interesting. They drink up to 40 gallons of water at a time. Yeah, and to put that in perspective, Lauren, that's about eight pounds per gallon. Wow. So that's about 320 gallons. I did the math ahead of time. <laughs> 320 no, pound I know pounds, I should. 320 <laughs> pounds of water, which is just a massive amount of water to take in. So they're they're amazing at at. Uh, holding that water reserve and, and cycling it efficiently in their bodies. Wow. Um, I, I didn't know that. I didn't know that they can kick in all directions with each leg. Yeah, and that's really important to know if you're a camel herder. Yeah, <laughs> if you're not, you're, you're going to be hurting from your camel. But don't system. worry, if you ride one at the zoo, you will not get kicked. Um, also, do they, don't, do they really spit? You know, people think they just spit, but I guess they do it to defend themselves, but it's not really spitting, right? Yeah, it's, it's more, um, it's a foul-smelling secretion. It's not saliva. It's from deeper down, so it's pretty, pretty nasty stuff. So you really don't want to so put it to the test. But it's, it's a way of avoiding. It. It's a way of avoiding an outright fight, you know, yeah. with with a potential enemy. So, yeah. you know, they're pretty accurate if they need to be. And they've also got. I don't know if this is on the fun facts, but they're just kind of neat. Camels have these really long, elegant eyelashes to keep wow. out desert sand. So they, they don't look like runway models in any other respect, but they've got the great eyelashes. You see, so you have to come to the Beardsley yeah. to see them and to get a little ride on them. Yeah. Um, and also you have some wonderful events that are coming up all year round and all summer yeah. long. And just a couple we want to mention, but you want to go to the website to find out more. The Red, White, and Blue Animal Scavenger Hunt. Right. That's coming up on July 4th. Yeah, That's absolutely. Fun. Yeah, because we have so many animals. You know, we have animals in every palette out there, every color every combo you can think of, but red, white, and blue certainly July 4th, so we have a great scavenger That's hunt for that day. For that. Also, you're going to have a presentation about the American bald eagle. That should be great. And yes. also Zoo Patrol. That is big. That's a Thank look you. behind the scenes. Yeah, wow. thanks for mentioning that. Zoo Patrol is our version. It's a camp-like program. It's uh, Monday through Friday mornings. If your kids love animals, they got to come to Zoo for Zoo Patrol. You My kids it. have been through it. It's awesome. It's so much fun. And the zoo, of course, our own zoo right there in Bridgeport on Noble Avenue. Um, and you're, I think you're open every single day during the year. We are. Well, except for Christmas, New Year's, and Thanksgiving, okay. but all summer long we're there. And what a great place to go with the kids, the whole family. Uh, you can find out more. Log on to the website, www.beardsleyzoo.org. So thank you guys so thank much. You, Lauren. And for bringing the little babies. They're so, so cute. We are big, uh, big fans of you. So thank you so much. I love having you on. Uh, and also we want to tell you about a wonderful event, and that's being planned, and I hope everybody can come on down. It's taking place in Newtown and it's a thank you event for the 70 plus dog teams that have and continue to work in the Newtown schools. The date is Saturday June 22nd. Event starts at 10 a.m. at the Fairfield Hills grounds or if it rains hopefully it won't it will be in the pavilion. It's sponsored by the Newtown veterinarian specialists and they're expecting 
thousands of people. We hope you're going to come. There'll also be two state legislators out there uh, announcing a couple of laws that were newly passed that we talked about. Uh, about canines uh, right here on Pet Talk. Uh, and so those laws have to do with having uh, service dogs uh, go to the scene of uh, where they are needed. So we hope that you will come and support uh, the wonderful work our canines do right here in Connecticut. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this has been Pet Talk.